I mean, people would just immediately comment and be like, white men. <laughs> How did they somehow get worse? <laughs> Brunch! Hit it, boys! <laughs> telling you off the air we're not done building this little studio of ours but once we're done first order of business with any remaining budget studio sneaks you know about this studio sneaks uh i'm assuming those are like uh like indoor sneaks like basically the house shoes house shoes (laughs) very good uh devotees of the patreon and the brunch youtube to which i hope everybody is subscribed know that we've been showing a lot of feet and just kind of giving it up. My thing has been, I've just, uh, not body shaming myself or whatever, my body's just not in a very good place right now, and uh, I've been showing a lot of leg because it's the summer months. I don't think that I've put myself out there in the most flattering way in these videos, but uh, audio-wise, I don't think I ever really put myself out there in the most flattering way. Fair. But Conversely, I think I'm in the best shape of my life right Are now. you? Yeah, really? I think so, yeah. Very and good. Like, like look, at it, look, look at these legs. Yeah, see? Legs Show those legs good. off. Yeah. I've been, I've been transitioning into... Uh, Shorter shorts. I know that's the move now. Oh yeah. But like I've, I'm progressively climbing up the up the thigh. Where are you shorts. doing fives now? Uh, I don't know like the exact number, but I don't know. I've just the all the I basically threw out all my old shorts. Wow. What I don't understand is, are fives for you the same as fives for me? <laughs> that's a good question. <laughs> that's a really good question. Famously, I wear an eleven shoe. I think that I <laughs> fuck you. <laughs> <laughs> that's a that's some throwback humor callback humor yeah. uh what last week was that last week's episode it was a uh it was a better call Saul post game episode oh, okay all right it was entirely about <laughs> about her what size sizes. since we've been doing video we've been talking about our feet uh a lot now you're just making up topics talking about house shoes or studio shoes just to bring up your your shoe size well i was explain. i said i i was like i gotta do some studio shoes and you were like what's that i was like i can't believe i've never told you this uh i probably haven't told you it because there are more interesting things than this story but i stole it from friend of the podcast colton bradford he's always wearing these brilliant white sneaks on on the set it doesn't wear them outside and i said colton you gotta tell me your secret what are you doing how do you keep those things so white and it's exactly what you, you just buy a pair of white sneakers, keep them at the studio. So I'm gonna it's really so smart. Once we're so I I did that and I get compliments all the time now. They say, Deej, what do you do what you gotta give us the story on these white sneaks of yours. So I don't know if I'll get some white sneaks, but you famously are a no shoes in the house guy. I am. So and we record here. So when we're done build the, the are there, set are there shoes in the house people like if you're allowing people to just walk through your house with shoes yes really oh yeah i'm a big shoes out oh, dude i hosted uh easter years ago and it made me such a shoes in the house person really a lot of people sitting around just like socks out for harambe hate that like what i'm doing right now devotees of the brunch youtube can see I've just got a sock out for the world to see. Yeah, that's, that's like, more normal than allowing people to like stomp around your house in shoes. We live in a society. So I think so. I, you got to choose your verbiage here. You're conflating what you prefer to what's normal. I would say that there's a, there's some sort of split. I don't know if it's a fifty fifty split. There are people who prefer shoes in the house to. Like I prefer guests as long as they're not tracking anything in. Well, that, I don't well, necessarily that's want to have, you, especially if if we're sitting down and we're at couches and chairs and we're doing what I'm doing right now, which is leg upon the knee, leg crossed. I don't want to see, especially if it's dress socks. I just don't want to see that shit. I mean, I guess it's, I guess there's like a, a argument to be made, but here's the here's the thing. It's like. During the winter, you cannot have somebody come into your house with shoes. Everything's going to be wet. It's, everything's going to be wet, and the salt will ruin hardwood floors. 
Ah, like so tracking the salt in from outside will literally ruin your floors. I definitely agree. Or I definitely can recognize this. You respect wood to <laughs> quote oh, the great you- Jerry Seinfeld <laughs> um, way more than I do. Famously, that's from Seinfeld from, uh, from Kurt, Fre- right? friends. Um, but <laughs> you definitely respect wood more than I do. I. uh well, like I, I won't put stuff below a table if I think that the the stuff below the table makes the whole thing look worse. So I'll like kind of intentionally scuff floors. Oh, okay. Yeah, I mean, you wouldn't be caught dead doing that. You're, no. you're putting socks on your furniture. Yeah, yeah, I have socks on all my furniture on my wood floors. I also have like I'm also like a massive coaster person. Oh, same. I, yeah, so like I don't want uh, not just for like wood, but for like everything. I just don't. I don't think that, like, people will realize probably how, like, anal I am about cleanliness. Interesting. I'm, I'm a little disorganized, but I am very clean. That I'm the same way. Yeah. I'm the same way. And if I've, like, I've had apartments that I thought weren't up to my cleanliness standards, and I've thrown every fit that needs it's to be It's a miserable thrown. existence. And it's like, you can walk in. Like at, at any given time, you you've been it, it, it where, wherever I've lived at any given point. Fifty uh, percent of the time, I look like I'm packing. I mean, the first it, time that I ever came to your house, uh, your apartment was before a concert. I want to say maybe it was before we went to oh, Lollapalooza. Oh, and I actually was come yeah, and I was coming back from a week in Florida, and it looked like a bomb went off in your bedroom. And like, I'll be honest with you, I kind of I was like. Taken aback, You're I was like, "What am I getting myself into?" I was, with this one? I was a little bit like, "Oh fuck!" Like, this is the man that I that I thought that I was friends with. I mean, it definitely it takes me. I I'm not proudly admitting this. It takes me one and a half weeks to three months to come back from a trip. That's fair. Yeah, that's de- that's definitely like, fair. I, I did- st- like when we went to California months ago. I had like an open suitcase in my dining room just like it was just still open like there was so, like there was unfinished business but i remember when i went to your your apartment there were like clothes yes. all over the floor Packing. like that's different yeah that's that's different that's that's not like after i don't i don't think there's any time where it's acceptable to have clothes all over the floor i'm ne- i'm never a like dirty clothes on the floor person. Oh, well, that's even worse. If yeah. clothes are going to be on the floor, they are dirty, regardless of you wore them or not. Oh, no, that's wrong. That's that's true. If, oh, oh my god, if you're like well, done I with guess laundry and I have I have like, dogs. So it's different. Ah, uh, true. Okay. Yeah, well, I I just wanted to clarify because while I am not proud of any pre and post packing disaster of clothes in suitcases and bags being everywhere, I'm never a clothes strung about person you may definitely find some like why is there a folded pair of pants like next to the closet and i'll be like oh just because i uh, wore those pants yes no that's fine they're yeah, just not back that, in the yeah, closet no, yeah no that, all that's fine like i i have like folded shirts and stuff all, uh, but they're never on the floor and yeah, yeah, I, I think the dog thing probably has something to do with that. But also, I mean, when you get a good, clean floor, there's nothing like it. Again, the dog situation, you're kind of, you're probably a little spoiled. You don't even think twice about it because yeah. there's just not the option of having it. There will be hair or piss on it <laughs> within the hour. Lots of piss with Duke. But if, yeah, but if you like, especially for me, um, I have, Do you, how do you do your pants in the closet? I don't do pants in the closet. Whoa. Yeah, I don't hang. I guess for my suits, I do. Okay. Where I, I drape the, the suit pants over the, the little hanger. Okay, yeah. I I have I do the pants hangers, not the ones with clamps, the yeah. ones that where you drape. Yeah. But sometimes I'll either put them on the top shelf of the closet or yeah, it's a weird spot, just like right next to the closet. <laughs> like, hey, I have a general idea of where these are going to go. But their pants are probably going to wear them again within the next two to three days. Yeah, I mean, I have a I have a pants drawer, uh, and that's where all my pants go. I used to be a pants drawer guy. I hate pants drawers. Really? They get heavy. They get crowded easily. I'll tell you what. They I, do get crowded easily. Yeah, and and like to dig to the bottom of a pants drawer is, is a nightmare. You end up so wearing you, you, you end, the same. You pants. end up wearing the same pants, the pants that are on the top of the pants drawer all the time. 
All right. Well, we've got to talk about Billie Eilish. You hear about Billie Eilish? Did she chunk it? No. I'm not. Who's she? Oh, you're talking about the uh, American singer-songwriter Billie Eilish. Correct. I'm talking about the viral TikTok song Billie Eilish. Have you heard that song? No, I have not. It's the first TikTok thing, real thing, that R-E-E-L, uh, thing that like I've wanted to do. What is it? It's It goes, uh, bitch, I'm stylish. Big, uh, uh, fuck, bitch. It go, this is part of the song. It goes, uh, bitch, I'm stylish. Black top. Big T-shirt, Billy Eilish, and at the Billy Eilish, the beat drops, and uh, the person, which is what happens in every reel or TikTok now, they change. They change clothes. Yeah, yeah that happens in every TikTok. I love that. <laughs> That's fantastic. That's a great. T- I, every time I see one of my friends post one of these things, I'm like, oh god, I, I I see that they're like looking at the camera a certain way, and I'm like, sound on. It's fuck. It's Billy Eilish. Let's okay, go. Okay, so what are the two outfits here? Uh. I'm thinking Pizza Planet shirt that you're wearing, mm-hmm. and then just whatever I'm wearing. We should do one of these TikToks. But, yeah, I mean, I'm down, but like, what's what's the theme of the TikTok? Oh, so they'll start, they'll be wearing a big shirt, and then they'll take off the big shirt and kind of like wave it down, like, whoa. Yeah. And then they change something. Outfits. They're wearing something hot. They're wearing something they were never wearing before. Yeah. Yeah, that's, no- that's that's every TikTok. It's like here I am looking comfortable, and then here's a tra- hard transition. Here I am like looking outrageously hot. Yeah, no, but not even that. I think that everybody's beautiful, no matter what. It is typically women that do it, though. And I'm not saying, hey, girls are always doing TikToks. Why aren't any fellows doing these Billy Eilish TikToks? I'm sure they are. Yeah, maybe your algorithm just isn't giving it to you. I mean, my algorithm's only giving. I haven't seen anybody do it that isn't my friend on TikTok. Okay. But I believe I've only seen, and I'm not just saying with this Billie Eilish thing. I'm not trying to stereotype either. I do think, though, the outfit change things, typically, I see women doing it more than men. But that's, you, you want to change outfits. Wa- yeah, but wa- want to know, like, there's not a lot of drastic difference between men men's outfits. Like, if you see a guy, that's he's true. usually wearing. The same things all the time. Like, mm-hmm. guys typically don't have different speeds, at least not to the extent that women do. And, I mean, women's fashion, it's not even close. Women's fashion, we've been on this for years, yeah. is a billion times better than men's fashion. It's a, it's a billion times more interesting. Like, it's oh, like yeah. the, the directions that you can go in women's fashion are way more interesting than guys. Have they? Is there ever been, like, a simple favor of men's fashion i guess that would be mad men but really yeah. they're just wearing suits I, all the time the most recent example that i can think of is yeah i mean I, this is a suit i mean uh they got uh aaron taylor johnson from bullet train was just like the best looking oh best looking and best dressed guy i've ever seen in my life he looked fantastic i was actually planning on us doing a billy eilish tiktok here but i don't know do you know how to make those things no i don't know how like how do they ch- like if you see a reel that has the Billie Eilish thing is there? Can you just say? I don't make know. Similar don't. TikTok or make similar. There reel should be like a pre-formatted. You, yeah, right. That's if they're like, okay, do the thing and then like throw the the big shirt down. I feel extremely stupid. Shooting them? No, just like oh, like you, not you, you knowing don't know how to anything. do anything. I just feel like I am the oldest that I've ever been. Oh it's, yeah, yeah. I mean, it just dawned on me. I don't. I. I have my way of editing videos, mm-hmm. which is to shoot things on my phone, send or screen grab on my Mac, send it to my PC, open a Premiere, stab myself in the head a thousand times because I hate fucking Premiere so much. I've got a pretty good idea, though. What? Uh, what? I think that we should do TikToks, like following the trends, but we should have Spike shoot all of them. And have them be like the most cinematic TikToks that exist. That should be our thing. Oh, that is, I'm a hundred percent it. Like we should have the Billy Eilish, like instead of the shitty, like, like quote unquote raw TikToks. Yeah. We should have cinematic experience TikTok trends. Yo, I know some like real players, some real musicians have the, so that, that Billy Eilish song samples, uh, Nothing by Noriega. You know that the uh, get some like get like a string quartet off to the side <laughs> yes. playing it. Have 
Oh, man. We should do gentlemen's TikToks. Ge- Dude, you've had some good ideas of late. <laughs> the, I can't even remember the other ones, though, now, because this is such a... This is the best idea I've ever heard in my life. <laughs> just really... Just sink whatever... Again, the brunch account doesn't really have any money, but sink and every dime we have personally into like empty our four hundred one ks. Make the nicest fucking TikToks you've ever seen. Hell yeah, I'm all all the way in on this. I mean, people would just immediately comment and be like, "White men, <laughs> how did they somehow get worse?" <laughs> white men privilege Lupin for- will <laughs> yes. speaking I of- mean will will would absolutely be in on this for will sure will be a monster at this yeah. speaking of will and the boys I I'm glad I remembered to say this uh are you up on where famously is right now in the washed universe I I know that it is Firmly more in circling back territory now than it is for us. Yeah, it's on. Famously, it's on loan <laughs> yeah. to circling back. That's and a, Will will appreciate that one. They are doing such an incredible job with it, and I wanted to talk about it, but I also don't want to call so much attention to it that it's not cool anymore. Mm-hmm. Which that'll be very us to make something that is cool. Friends are like, this is cool. And then we just tank it by and then we addressing tank it. it. And then we're like, we did something cool? Oh, my <laughs> God. Hey, look at us. We're cool. And then it's over. But uh, the Circling Back guys have been doing the Famously thing. And Dave, I, I crack up every time I hear it from Dave. But the, Dave probably uses it the most in the spirit that we were initially using it. Which Actually, the way we were initially using it was the way Ezra Koenig occasionally correctly uses it on time crisis where if he brings up a fun fact he'll say oh well famously blah blah and he uses it the way that it's meant to be done and then one episode over the summer uh we just done it a few times and then noticed we were doing it yeah that was did, the, like, that was the thing it happened like naturally we just kept you're like, saying you said it over famously and... like three times already <laughs> and then by the end of the episode we said famously 600 times and we're and now it, it now i use it a million times Dude. in my day-to-day it's so bad has anybody like, called out yeah. like what What's the famous? What, what is this? They're just like, why are you saying famously so much? One of my friends, yeah, one of my friends said that a few weeks ago, and the next, I explained to him, I was like, oh, it's kind of just like a inside joke with me and Pete, and the next time I used it, which wasn't on purpose, but again, just like gets into your life, mm-hmm. uh, thought it was hilarious, <laughs> but uh, it's getting borderline out of control with circling back. And I love it so much. I was listening to Circling Back. I was pulling a Dave, listening to Circling Back, falling asleep the other night. Mm-hmm. And uh, I laughed out loud at Dylan saying <laughs> that famously he went to dinner the night before and had brought some leftovers for lunch. <laughs> I, I really do. That is the I best really, use of famously. Yeah, I I've really ever do heard. like incorporating into extremely mundane Monday, things. Monday, right. Just like. Famously, I mean, Dave will use it kind of the way we use it, where he'll just be like, uh, famously, we have an intern who thinks this. And it's like, okay, well, maybe at some point you've brought that up before. Yeah, right. It's references to, like, things in your world yeah. that are, like, not famous, but we, like, it's it's a shared knowledge between us two and maybe nobody else. Like, video people, if you were like, hey, by the way, I'm, I'm sucking on this, uh, this uh, Starbucks yeah. grande sweet foam cold... But, Vanilla but we're just like, oh yeah, brew, yeah. Famously, I stopped off for the fellow before. Mm-hmm. Love it. Somebody, by the way, uh, somebody responded to a tweet of mine accusing me of stealing a tweet. That's, I mean, that is an incredible development in your world because that means you had a good tweet. That's well, not necessarily. You could steal a bad tweet. You could steal a bad tweet, but people usually don't. They're they not choose, coming. They choose to steal the good ones. Okay. Well. Uh, oh, did you get accused I, of stealing the uh I the coincidentally Dylan one? had tweeted something about my seven year old son. <laughs> oh, okay. And somebody responded and said, uh, straight up, why'd you steal this tweet? Mm. And Explain I, yourself. I, I uh oh I mean I I went as they, as they say in the circle and back world, macro <laughs> yesterday. Yeah. Which I texted you after I blasted it off. You said I'm, I got four retweets in the first like ten minutes. I, I was look I was you texted me at like nine thirty in the morning and yeah. you're like, I'm going macro and I I woke up like an hour later and I checked your timeline and like your max tweets on the retweets on the timeline were like Probably like twenty at that yeah, point. Yeah. And I was like, 
okay, he, I think he's like he's predicting that he's going to go viral. And you did. Yeah. Uh, but did the I think that Will did this or I accidentally misunderstood. I, th- I thought that I think that when you go viral at all now, you respond to it with the Dylan tweet, which oh, okay. is my son seven because it's like, oh, OK, well, I guess I'm a viral guy now. You reply to that. And uh, yeah, so somebody okay. accused me of stealing it. But I responded, this is the tweet you send when you go viral. <laughs> Like, this is famously known. <laughs> Something like that. That's amazing. Hell yeah. Love those boys. You know what else I love? What? Sucking down good liquids. Good liquids. And I ain't just talking about this Starbucks Frappuccino who's he what's he. You've been sucking into your face. I'm talking about this Vizzy Hard Seltzer I'm about to suck live. Hell yeah. This is a sucking podcast. We ain't sucking these out of hot dog straws either because that shit was absolutely fake. Oh, you went viral fake. with that, yeah. You, uh, Pete posted a video of himself at a uh, baseball game <laughs> just uh, just absolutely just choking down a hot dog. Just glizzy in my beer all the way down. I had a great line today at work. They said they showed that video and they said, uh, why is this guy doing that? What's it even taste like? You know what I said it tastes like? A hot dog and a beer. I said it tastes like... America's pastime. Oh, it tastes God. like baseball. It tastes like thinking too. Throw a little cha in there. Mm, you, you throw you throw a little bit of cheese in there, and you almost have a Vizzy Hard Seltzer. You've got meat. That's meats, cheeses, <laughs> and alcohol, preferably from 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 uh, Vizzy, our friends at Vizzy. Uh, today's episode is brought to you by our friends at Vizzy. We uh, we enjoy these in our free time without them sponsoring the podcast, but. Since they are sponsoring today's, we will suck down some. Uh, any summer obsessions need Vizzy in the mix. Uh, summer's coming to an end, but that doesn't mean that you have to give up your Vizzies because Vizzy is a year-round vibe. Mm. Uh, we're moving into the fall, which I personally believe is the best drinking season. Oh, no I don't doubt. think that's a hot take. Uh, but while you're transitioning from the summer to the fall... Make sure to grab a case of Vizzy Hard Seltzer because they've got flavors for every vibe and every season. Whether you're cozying up for cuffing season or hosting a tailgate that will be the en- envy of the lot, pass the vibe check with a case of bold, delicious Vizzy Hard Seltzer. Uh, Vizzy mimosas are absolutely cracked. I don't know if you've tried those yet. I haven't. You have not? The Vizzy Mimosas are amazing. They have the refreshing taste of real orange juice, and they're perfect for daytime sipping. Uh, They come in strawberry orange, pineapple orange, peach orange, or pomegranate orange. I mean, you're talking about a peach orange mimosa? Mm. Give me that right now. I'll tell you what. As somebody who famously has never eaten a pomegranate, Pomegranate flavored stuff, I'm always in. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, like, it's sort of like the opposite of grape to me. Whereas, like, I like eating grapes, but anything that is grape flavored usually is ass. Oh, I disagree. I mean, grape soda. Delicious. Not for me. Uh, if you like to shake things up or just keep your options open, try a Vizzy Variety Pack for a cornucopia of flavors. Wow. They worked in cornucopia to this read. Hell yes. And don't forget. Go Vizzy. Fantasy football season, too, we should mention. That's right. Yeah. I mean, like, if you, you've you got your fantasy football draft coming up, famously, you're going to need some Vizzies for the boys because <sighs> you do not want to drink draft. Don't draft or... Uh, don't don't drink and don't actually don't not drink and draft. I'll tell you what. I think the beer market might have the drafts cornered. True. My league auctions. That's busy right there. Go after auctions. Say we are we are the official fantasy auction drink. <laughs> and then and then follow up. I don't, with actually, I don't, who I, else is? I don't think you're allowed to say call them auction drafts anymore. I believe there was a movement to change Ooh, that. Is like, that true? Yeah. Interesting. Yeah, I believe that like Yahoo and like a bunch of other like fantasy hosting sites are like wow. we're not calling them auction drafts anymore. I mean, I famously still do that. Let me let me check my league see if it's still what would it be called like budget draft? Uh, salary. I think that okay. one of them I saw a salary draft or something like that. Um, All right. 
Vizzy Hard, Seltzer, Vizzy Hard Seltzers bring a flavor for every vibe. Stock up on Vizzy Hard Seltzer and show some love for the show. Here's how to get yours. Go to VizzyHardSeltzer.com slash washed to find Vizzy near you. That's VizzyHardSeltzer.com slash washed. And to hear about the latest flavor drops and more, sign up at VizzyHardSeltzer.com slash subscribe. You must be 21 plus in order to enjoy. Please celebrate responsibly uh, and Vizzy is from the Molson Coors Beverage Company, Milwaukee, Wisconsin. Head over to the Brunch Patreon, patreon.com slash listen to brunch, where you can get all of our good bonus content. I believe, I don't believe, I don't know if it's totally locked in yet, but I think this Monday we have a stream slash kind of game sort of thing that will involve you, the listeners. It will be very, very fun. It's a great idea. In fact, I saw another podcast uh post something that i was afraid was them coming up with the same idea can confirm it's not this is a brilliant idea you're going to have a lot of fun with us so head over to patreon.com slash listen to brunch to a participate in all of our bonus fun but also uh support us building things and uh giving spike more run to come up with yeah i mean like every episode that we do now is just like as you've already heard, it's us trying to give Spike more responsibility and yeah. more things. Just mainly because We're Spike gonna... does awesome shit. I mean, we haven't even talked about it. The uh, the my little stories that you did. My guy here is a is a brilliant actor. I was asked today sincerely by somebody by like a a a player in the pop culture world if I was sincerely thinking of getting into acting yeah I because mean, they they were like it was that good and i was like it was that well put together and they were like yeah probably fair but for a second they mistook it for a real production yeah i mean i uh i heard from a uh a close friend this week oh that you are a genuinely good actor uh scott zolak has said that about me hell yeah true um, again this is the amc a-list thing where i'm not saying that I'm better than the people waiting in line. AMC is saying that I'm better than the people yeah. waiting in line. Uh, Scott Zolak once said that I've got it. Hell yes. <laughs> said he's got it. It's the only nice thing Zolak that, has that's said about the, me. That's a man that I would trust his opinion on anything. Yo, I love Scott <laughs> Zolak. I'm the first like little while that I knew Scott Zolak, I was pretty sure I hated him. <laughs> but <laughs> He seems like somebody that we should both absolutely hate. That, like, Just you, in terms of like... The entire package is everything that we should hate. But for some reason, that guy is so endearing. <laughs> oh, my God. I love him. I mean, he's also a brilliant artist. Do you know this? No. It, he's like the best drawer. Really? In the world. What? He's, dude, he is a savant in so many ways. He is, he's hilarious. I mean, he's got an attention span that puts ours to, ch- I think like we have like the kind of, classic like dumb loud person on the internet attention span can kind of go wherever it feels like going in the moment yeah zolak puts either of us to to shame wow okay but anyway we uh, should have scott zolak on the podcast t- dude he would be he would perfect. absolutely do it we would need to get we need to assign one of us to be the babysitter because mark bertrand on their radio show <laughs> essentially just babysits scott yeah. zolak yeah which i i love that show by the way not to this is going to be a very specific niche thing for boston listeners but i think that Zolak and Bertrand with Hardy on 98.5 The Sports Hub is one of the best things to come out of the pandemic because they were already a show before the pandemic, but once the pandemic hit, they were the only show that I really know of that totally leaned into, there's nothing to talk about, so let's just fuck around for a little bit. They would do uh, like four hours on uh, why aren't there as many pickles in the grocery stores as there used to be, (laughs) and they get calls on it. They're the best. Uh, Anyway, uh, Spike knows how to make something look like something. So the, the, his re- idea for this was like ridiculous. But he was like, it, and it will look like a package yes. that would run on any of these shows that he's worked on, I've worked on, we've all seen. And Legi- it looks so professional. Legitimately, like the My Little Stories thing, like I've seen f- like four different, very similar vibe type, like actual documentary clips yeah. on Instagram reels and shit. Yeah. And I've like pause real quick because I'm like, 
oh, is this one of this, another one of Spike's? Because I follow Spike on Instagram now. Yeah. And so, like, it comes up, and I'm like, ooh, if this is another My Little Stories, I am absolutely in. And it's, like, not. It's a genuine It's a genuine one. And I'm like, ah, fuck that. I just want the Spike ones. They're funny. They're dark. They're incredible, though. And he's got such a good eye. The thing that we did, we knocked it out in, like, 30 minutes. And it was so easy, but he also would... Like pretty much to the word that was scripted by Spike, and if I threw something else in there, I which said is it, sorry to interrupt, but more impressive to your own acting ability because it seemed very you. It oh yeah, yeah, very I mean, you to come like to have it be very natural. Yeah, all right. Well then, then I'll whichever way I can take the least amount of credit, I'll say that each thing was for the most part scripted, and if. I said a word he liked or something or didn't like or whatever. He was very good about like, oh, he's a great, just make a great sure director. That, then just make sure you say it this way, and it was fucking easy. You know, he wants to do one with you. I know, and now I want to do one really bad, and now I'm like also a little scared that I'm not going to be up to standard. Oh, absolutely. I mean, if he could do it with me, he could do it with anybody. I said I was like, I. He was like, would Pete want to do one of these? And I was like, honestly. The answer is probably he would not want to do one, but if he understands, A, that he can do it, and B, how funny it is, he will fucking knock it the fuck out of the park. No, I definitely want to do it. Awesome. Yeah, it, I, uh, I famously have had a one-of-one uh, one acting career. Okay. I was in a sixth – I was in sixth grade – when I did uh, Guys and Dolls at my middle school, and I, whatever like the menacing character in Guys and Dolls is, mm. I played that guy. Whoa. And I was like four feet tall, and my henchman was the tallest kid in school. So it was extremely funny that like this kid who was like six foot six in That's like funny. seventh grade yeah. was my henchman who I just bullied around in Guys and Dolls the entire time. And like, I fucking crushed it. I was going to say, I bet you murdered that I shit. crushed it. And it was like everybody's big takeaway how funny it was that like I was the the tough guy as like the smallest kid in school with this other guy. Uh, and like it got went straight to my head. I thought that I was too good for every other school production. Like I wow. tried out for like Charlie Brown six months later and I got like like a very small role. And I was like, fuck this. I quit. I'm too big for this shit. Wow. In the, uh, I did the senior class play, and they cast me as kind of one of those added characters because they were like, I don't know, maybe they, they, they maybe they character. just didn't like me or whatever. But I was like, that was a bad move on their part. Yeah. If they had, if if they had any way of having like all in DJ, that production would have popped a little more. Not because I would have done great, but because. You would have had someone who was like really into it. Yeah. And like we like when we're going at full speed, we inspire one another. Yeah, that's true. They lost a lot of inspiration when they cast me. Me I, me and somebody else who got a shitty role, we wrote a, a song protesting <laughs> it. I forget the I had a I just remember one of the lyrics was uh and the casting was whack. I think I'm playing a jack because they had us play playing cards it was alice in wonderland uh, okay okay it was it was a pretty seething takedown of the production <laughs> um we've talked about it maybe before i don't know if it's on air or off air but like it, it's kind of stunning that we haven't been cast in anything just as uh, just as a duo like that's half of the reason that i want to get on like more actors and stuff is just be like hey put us in your shit dude like how lena hasn't put us in something or like randy getting us into stranger things like come on pull some strings i mean us. if they ever need podcasters or if they need for, gary tangway is like dude you could just be like there there's a character that is like a heightened version of yourself in a lot of movies mm -hmm. uh yeah, whether it's like the sad man or the like, like the Ziggy type, yes. which like I don't want to be the Ziggy type, but he was like, there's like like casting directors when they think like I need a whatever type. They like, think of a specific. You could yeah. fall into one of those categories, which means that you wouldn't be. Uh, let me pull a random name, Kevin Costner. <laughs> that might be foreshadowing, or. 
whomever, but like you could get auditions for yeah. stuff or whatever. So I, he told me to get an acting book. This was like months ago. I haven't read it yet, but I ordered it. Why not go out on, on some auditions? Yeah. But why I, isn't anybody like put us in like a fucking commercial at least? Like we haven't even got, I guess like maybe we have an audition for any commercials, but like we shouldn't need to. This is I would me going love back to, to my, audition for stuff with you. This would be cool. Just show up to things and be like, hey, uh, it says you need a uh, handsome man in his 30s. Famously, this duo provides any sort of handsome you could want, be it Traditional. cl- traditionally or the first place votes that doesn't rank in the top three <laughs> kind of handsome. <laughs> You do get some. You do get significant first place votes. I'm a ranked choice. Yeah, I, 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 I'm very aware that I'm, I'm ranked choice hot. Yeah, so I'm, 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 I'm not going to win. You appeal to specific tastes, but I'll get some. I'll get. Yeah. If I get any votes, they're like first or second. And place I'm votes. like a. I think like we've had this discussion many a times. Yeah. But like, I, I, I'm growing more jealous of like you appealing to specific tastes. Uh, I don't know. Like, there's. To finish the analogy, for I appeal who to get boring it, like, people. Who you're getting pro- on every ballot, which is very like, but that's not special. who doesn't want to be but on that's every not ballot. Special, like, you know, like if if you think that I'm like because I am like more traditional, yeah, there are more people that you're going to find attractive. Like I'm in a crowd. I'm one of a crowd. You're appealing to specific tastes, and your group is way smaller. But I mean. Pete, I, I think that you are more handsome now. And maybe this gets back to like your in shape thing. You're more handsome now than the day I met you. Thank you. I appreciate that. Seriously. I, I mean, I do think that you are famously. We both think that even though you've never really. I don't know if you said it about me. We both think that we're very <laughs> handsome people. But I truly do. Th- like if somebody was like, ah, Pete's like traditionally hot. I'd be like, yeah, well, there's a lot of people who are traditionally hot. But Pete's very hot. So you could be traditionally hot and just be an okay looking person. He's like the you're like Tom Giles level stuff, which is like peak uh, generic. <laughs> <laughs> That's so mean, but like Tom is generic hot, but like extremely generic hot of like the what CV- a handsome guy of like CVS hotness. <laughs> yeah, I'm putting you in the CVS commercial, bro. Uh, you know I who else? You know who else? A lot like of people who are though, like very Field Yates. Tr- yeah. Field Yates is like the most CVS hot, but like also like front of the store CVS hot. Like we are putting him front and center. Yeah, he is everything you want. If we gave Field Yates, this would be a great project. Let's take our traditionally hot friends and make them ranked choice yes. hot. What do you know? What I do for Field Yates? I already uh, know. Make his hair longer. Oh, uh, he looks very good with short hair, though. Yeah, but that makes him more. Boring. That makes him like, oh, why are you doing that to yourself? Like, oh, it, you're just trouble, aren't you? It, like it makes him seem more weatherman-y. Okay. Like if he had like some slicked back, like sh- not shoulder length, but like below the ear. Slick back hair. I think the field would could rock that, and I, it would be more choice. I'd love to get him in a leather jacket. <laughs> Uh, but my fix for field and fix, please. Yeah, you uh, don't need to fix him. Uh, my again, my, it's just a way to transition somebody <laughs> from. I do love the idea though of like you know like there's like that I can fix him and it's usually involving like a troubled yeah like, troubled disheveled Let's type take this character. model citizen and make him yeah. a little uglier. <laughs> right. I now like, I like him. I like the idea of flipping the I can fix him sort of trend with taking like the most polished person and making them a little shittier or a little bit more like. "Quote unquote choice." I can't wait for Spike to do all the photoshopping for this video and for Field to absolutely never talk to us <laughs> again. But my my fix for Field Yates. This the name of this episode is "Fixing Field Yates." He's going to be so horrified. The man is a father. Uh, we are going to. Here's what we're going to do. We're going to give him a Michael Mando scar Ooh. on the eye. Ooh. If you give Field Yates an eye scar, ugh, oh my god. <laughs> I just I think you got to change more though because if Field Yates has like an eye scar, they're gonna be like, "How'd you get that? Is that like a paper cut?" Mm, they'd be like, "Did somebody did you get a really bad paper cut did, when you were doing your taxes?" Did you uh, come in first at a classically handsome contest and the runner-up <laughs> attacked you? Did you uh, 
did you like hit the dressing room door at uh express while you were trying on like the most fitted suits you could find mm. something like that yeah. how do you, how do you fix tom giles uh you make him like six inches shorter and uh <laughs> he's hot but you know it'd be really hot if he was fucking short <laughs> He's just too tall to be that handsome. No, uh, Tom, Tom Giles, I kid you not, people. If you don't know who he is, he's one of my dearest friends. He's just... I don't know. Complete. How, yeah, I don't know how, like, you fuck that up. Like, he, he, he tried having bad facial hair, and he got, like, a mustache, and I was like, oh, he's way hotter. Looks great. <laughs> yeah. It's his ID he, photo. It feels like he tries to fuck himself up, and it's like, fuck, how are you hotter? You know what I do to him? I give him. You know what I do to him? <laughs> a lot. I I give him the uh, Don Draper in a bad way kind of constantly sweaty, a little red, just like get something bad going with that skin. Put a story there. Yeah, that seems fair. I don't know what I do with you. I. Uh, what if I made? What if we made? Like, what if we shoot you up like two feet? <laughs> And you're just like suddenly lanky. Yeah, that would be fucked up, huh? I mean, honestly, like the the way to to make you uh, ranked choice hot would be to make you kind of like skinny. Yeah, I mean, or then to, or then do people just exclude you because you're already? Uh, I don't think that I would be hot at all if I was skinny because like my head is too big. They'd be like, this guy looks like a bobblehead. Man. I'd look like one of those. You'd, um, be, you'd be bad Photoshop hot. <laughs> yeah, I'd be. Uh, you know uh, those headliners. From like when we were kids, oh, the little tiny things with the giant heads. Oh, okay, yeah, yeah, those things were awesome. I used to have all those. Okay, well, uh, I feel really bad about that segment entirely. Let's talk about. Yeah, our... we just did a segment in which we just uh, lost sh- all our... sh- shit on all of our good friends. Early, famously, earlier in this podcast, you said you saw my clothes strung about in wondered is this a guy that i should be friends with the rest of the podcast has been spent making sure that you never have any more (laughs) friends for the rest of your life Uh, here's one though that we didn't discuss i don't know how we didn't do this how do you fuck up dylan just give him what he wants have me hang around him a bunch (laughs) fair give him the plus one of dj uh, RRR is an epic action film that is the most expensive Indian film ever made, which I found to be a weird description because that makes it sound like there was a more expensive film made somewhere else. It also makes it sound like, boy, they fucked this one up. Because usually when you preface something with like, it's this the was most the expensive, most expensive it's disaster. Yeah, right, yeah. Uh, it tells the fictional tale of, real, uh, of two real-life revolutionaries who strike up an unlikely friendship on opposite sides of an oppressed nation. It has song, dance, and so much fire, it puts 2017's Baywatch, which we famously had the, uh, we had really the cast of that movie on with us to shame. Mm-hmm. Remember when we had the cast of Baywatch? I do not. We had Oscar Nunez, who True. didn't sound thrilled with the project and said, yeah, I die in it. I perish in a fire. We also had... Um, Famously, we Hannibal had... Hannibal Burris. Hannibal Burris. Yeah. We didn't have him on the podcast. It was exclusive Patreon content, but That's the right. Patreon didn't exist yet. That's true. So we just talked to him. We ran into him at a f- music festival, yeah. and he was like, yo, what happened in that movie? Because I did not watch it. I did not go to the premiere. That's right, man. I was wearing a Baywatch hat, too. <laughs> That's right. Oh, we are like, Hannibal, hey, man, right? And he was like, I have no relationship with Baywatch. What are you talking about? Oh, I wasn't. Yes, yes, yes. Is that out? It was a hilarious experience. To, like a, an actor in Baywatch, a sig- pretty significant actor in Baywatch was like, oh, yeah, fuck. I was in that movie. How'd yeah. it go? <laughs> uh, I'm not going to quote anybody, but he also didn't seem to love that movie, right? Definitely not. Did not. I think that I could have a quote ready, but uh, that was Patreon content, and uh, you cheapskates didn't uh, weren't weren't on there yet because we famously did not have a Patreon. Pete, you saw this movie, gave me the quick, strong recommend, and when you recommend a f- movie to a friend, there's like it's kind of like Taken, where there's a window of like two or three days, mm-hmm. and if the person doesn't take the recommendation or watch the movie within that time. There's a good chance they're never going to watch that movie. Correct. You and were passionate about this. I was passionate about it, mainly because like it uh, is a great podcast movie. Mm. And when I find one of those, 
I want to talk about it, and I really just kind of harass you until you're like, fine. I, I didn't really, really have to do that in this one. You're like, okay, I'm in. Yeah, and I really did not have time to watch this movie. I had uh, it's three hours. Yeah, just a busy week, and also had other movies that I had to see. I saw uh, Emily, the Criminal, which I loved. Can't wait for you to see that and for us okay. to talk about that. But I was like, there are going to be three hours. Even if I have to watch it in chunks, I'm watching this. And Pete, within the first 20 minutes, I was like, yeah. <laughs> this is the most... You, you just described it. You said it's the most insane action movie you had ever seen. It is insane. Uh, and it has everything. And it's not perfect, but it does feel sort of like a throwback, imperfect, like 90s blockbuster where uh, like the CG, there's a lot of CGI, there's a lot of like corny shit in it, mm -hmm. but all of it feels awesome, and it's all like so. Not all of it, but like a lot of it is really tacky, and it's just soul food. I mean, it has like four Bollywood endings throughout <laughs> yeah. the movie. You're like, it's oh, not technically Bollywood. I know. I did look that up. Yeah. It's, right. It's not. Uh, it's not Bollywood, but it has Bollywood qualities. Definitely. I mean, like the the big songs and dances, yeah, right. like everybody. Comes Which, together. like, they introduce this after they've already established that it's insane. So, like, once they get into like song and dance, you're like, what the fuck is going on? But once you open yourself up to this experience. It is just the most fun that you'll have. Yeah. So Beam is the leader of a colony who has a child kidnapped. This is in the 1920s. And uh, Raju is an officer for the British. And he is Jack Bauer on everything. I mean, if we're, uh, if we're is... talking about, uh, like, traditionally hot... Ram oh, is so hot. I wrote it down. He is the hottest bad guy since Henry Cavill. He is so hot. And he also has a, a mustache. Also, I right. I, I think that is why I made that association. But uh, they're on both sides of kind of the law here. And one is trying to do the right thing. One is trying to rise through the ranks. And uh, one day, they happen to save a little boy together. Don't know that they're actually looking for each other mm -hmm. to kill the other one, and they become best friends. They do everything together, and even though this guy is on the wrong side of history, would definitely be canceled, has quite the redemption arc. I don't know how people feel about that. They don't like when bad guys become good guys, but they do this thing, and they become these friends. It's so unlikely, but even though he's a bad guy on paper, he's like a good friend. He's a great Fancies friend. himself a... a, a good person mm -hmm. and is trying to help this guy helps him fall in love with the beautiful jenny of course and yeah, yeah they save a kid together they do a lot of stuff on motorcycles there's, there's like a i mean this we've already established this movie's like three hours there's probably a, like around a 14 minute montage of them just like being super gay and bro oh yeah, yes, yes. and it is awesome <laughs> i I was really into, and I was like, I couldn't tell initially. I was like, so does everybody is everybody watching this movie because it's crazy, because it's bad, because it's good? I really like this movie. I don't know what it has. The on story is extremely interesting, and yes. like the action is insane. It's really fucking. It's like a, it's a whole production, and I mean, it's a very. It begs the kind of moral question of. When somebody is, like, clearly, when you watch it, they're, they're on the wrong side of history, and they're helping oppress people, but they're in that life, and they fancy themselves a good person. They think they're trying to do the right thing, and as they're interacting with people that they don't know are the very people that they're harming, they're like, oh, well, of course, I'm a nice person, so I'm nice to this person. Yeah, I'll be this person's friend. All the while, it's like, yeah, but your day job is keeping a girl kidnapped my dog yeah. and are you not seeing this and it's real like um you know even if you have an end goal with great intentions do the means justify the ends yeah ends justify the means i always get that backwards it's no the me does the means justify the end like it does what you do to get to a conclusion yeah. justify you know getting to that conclusion like if you have to do a ton of bad shit to end up with a like a positive or like yeah. a desired result is is it worth it 
I mean, that's Jack Bauer 101 right there. There's a lot of killing. There's a lot of death. I checked. This is a PG-13 movie. I have no idea how it's that. I think that if there's that much blood, at some point, there if, it, if there's like more than six min- total minutes of bleeding in a movie... But maybe it it's, maybe it goes by percentage, right? Maybe if it's like six minutes of a fucking four hundred minute movie. Yeah, then we can go PG thirteen. I did love. Did they, you notice that? That'd beginning? be so funny if they were like, okay, this has to be rated R because it, it's surpassing the uh, blood percentage threshold. And they're like, okay, cool. We'll add in like a fourteen minute montage of them being gay, and that'll get it below the threshold. Lo- Dude, that montage was amazing. It was, and it was just so. It was just so pure and sincere and. You just totally believed this friendship. And they say there's a song that's sung over it, and it's like, and now they're best friends. I was like, oh, yeah, I can tell. Like, they are best friends. <laughs> it's, they it, just I, met each other, and they are fucking best friends the, now. The best part about that is that uh, I had to – obviously, I had to watch, like, with subtitles. And, uh, like, when they when they have the montage and they're playing the, the song – they have like the subtitles of the song and like the lyrics. And oh, it's and the like, translation's always ridiculous. It's, it's ridiculous. Like, it's like they and... are on different sides of this fight. <laughs> yeah. It is a fight. Remember the girl Molly in the beginning <laughs> yeah. was stolen, and I'm like, how's that all rhyming? <laughs> <laughs> it, it does not. It like it explains it blow for blow, and you're like, all right, we get it. Like you can be a little bit more subtle here. Yeah. Though the the yeah the translations on the songs were uh, were very really funny. funny. Yeah, one of my notes is the song when they become friends, uh, just absolutely. And like rocks. it explains the like one of the overarching themes of the uh, of the movie, which is uh, beam is water and uh, ram is yeah. fire, mm-hmm. and like that comes together several times. And I I think the way that they do that, including uh, the final act where. Uh, I don't want to spoil anything, but like they incorporate f- water and fire incredibly oh, yeah. with both characters, and I they thought that was really really cool. Yeah, really throughout the movie, the water and fire thing—it's how they become friends. Mm-hmm. You're right; it's very big late in the movie. This is a like this movie we talk about as like a over the very over the top oh, yeah, action I, movie, like intentionally extra. But it is also very smart. It is a very smart, very interesting, great story awesome themes there's there's a lot to this movie and there when i say that there's a little bit of everything there is a little bit of everything uh there is talk they initially had no plans of making a sequel but there is now franchise talk i don't know how you can't (laughs) i know i i also part of me is like i don't know how you can't i don't know how you can't like you have to follow that up especially with the way that everything is now, like if fucking the gray man gets a gray yeah. man cinematic u- cinematic universe, we're not going to give RRR a cinematic universe. But honestly, the the movie itself feels like a cinematic universe. They cover so many oh, yeah. different things, and there are like different acts to this movie. It feels like it's its own cinematic universe in one movie, and that's something that I like about it. And I also like, I'm like, how are you going to follow that up? It is truly an an epic. And how is there enough money? To make right. another one of these movies. How like how, crowdfunding could make another one, honestly, because everybody everybody loves this movie. Yeah. Everybody Veronica loves this Mars movie. that shit. Yeah. Do it. 